Hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Ishmael. I am an account manager here in IQ Option. And today we will be having a webinar about uh, candlestick patterns, a way of uh, helping us to trade based in candles only. We will study the shape of the candle and to see if we can predict the price either upward or downtrend. Uh, let's share screen. We started with the presentation as always, 10-15 minutes of presentation, and then we move to the to the chart. We move to the live accounts to see some examples on, on prices. And also, please, very important, I always like to ask you that uh, after for the analysis in the live chat, uh, give me your suggestions and we can check any asset that you are interested. If you are doing doing a dollar, any stock, we can double check. Okay, the situation. Uh, fine. So, um, hello. We have a few hellos there on the chat. Kumar, Abraham, Valentin, Saskia. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. So, as it says here, trading with candlestick patterns, part one. We will be having a part two, a uh, few weeks because there are many, many, many candlestick patterns. We're going to focus only on four today, and we will leave the rest for, for the next one to not make it so, so long. So please, before starting, you know, uh, trading involves a certain level of risk we must be aware of. And then we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. OK, so Q&A, you have the chat there. Find me, the moderators, we will be checking, answering your questions. Leave your suggestions, any comment is well received. And also you will be getting a recording of this webinar in a couple of days to your IQ Ocean email address. Let's start. What are candlestick strategies? So candlestick build patterns that may be used to predict price directions once completed. Um, Important here, I know that some people trade with line in the chart. It's okay, but the candlestick, we like it because it gives us more information. If I have a line here, it's just a line moving up, moving down, whatever. With candles, why they are so popular? Because I have the information of a certain period, the week, which is telling me the highs and lows of the session. And the body is telling me the opening price, in this case here, and the closing. If it's five minutes, since the minute one till minute five. If it's one hour, since minute one to minutes, minute 59. So it gives, gives me more information, the candlesticks. What is important to know? Well, candlesticks have been used for centuries. This is something that comes from Japan. Actually, they call it Japanese candlesticks because it's uh, from rice traders back then. There are various uh, candlestick patterns, shooting star, hammer, doji, bullish engulfing, bull, uh, bearish engulfing as well, abandoned baby, hanging man, that have funny names. We got many. Uh, we're going to focus on hammer, doji, and some of these today. Trading is often dictated by emotion, which can be read in candlestick charts. Yes, true. Also, uh, we, it can say a lot in the candles about the, the trade. So how to identify a hammer? Nice. So let's start with the first, first pattern. Um, this is the hammer. This is the body. Doesn't matter. Remember, please, doesn't matter the color of the uh, candle. Either green, either red, it's fine. It's still a hammer, OK? What I want is the shape. So this is hammer-shaped candlestick. In the lower shadow, which means this, below the body, is at least twice the size of the body. In this case, it's more than twice. It's maybe six or seven times. It's a great example. And the body of the candlestick, the difference between the open and closing. In this case, where it opens here above and closes here. So actually, during the period, whatever period I have my candlesticks, in this case, uh, the price is very similar to the opening. But there, were, there was too much volatility in this period. Okay? The shadow shows the high and low prices for the period. 
This is my high in the session and this is my low. What happened in this case? What is telling me is telling me that the selling pressure tried to bring the price down but didn't succeed. Let's say this is a one hour or one day. It tried to bring the price down but didn't succeed and the price went above again. What I think here, if my next candle really closes above, either here, here, or here, I can consider it a change in the trend and the starting of a bullish trend of an upward trend. Uh, shooting star. Well, shooting star pretty similar. Uh, shooting star can be called as well reversal hammer, long upper shadow. Uh, the fact of a shooting star is that it can be at the very end of a trend. So it can show us a reversal point. But we can find it also um, not at the very end. Also, this can go down and afterwards can keep going up. Okay. Um, so shooting star. This one is bearish. The hammer is telling me, let's say, uh, 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 that I, con I might consider the price that will go up. The shooting star, the opposite, okay? This should be bearish, according to the theory. Uh, same as before, I want this shadow to be at least twice the size of the body. Again, doesn't matter the color, red or blue, I want this shape. Sorry, red or green, I want this shape, the same shape, okay? Like this. And ideally, I want no shadow here, down. Ideally, I want no shadow here. That's the long upper shadow with the small real body. So how to identify a doji? What is a doji? Doji is the following. This is how it looks. It's this one here. And this is a Greek candle. Uh, it happens sometimes when uh, the price starts at five. One hour period, let's say, it closes the hour at five again. It has some volatility, sure, fine, but it opened and closed at the same price. What is this telling me? This is telling me that there is what? Uncertainty, doubts. Uh, investors are divided. Bullish pressure, bearish pressure, buying, selling, we don't know. What I do in this case is I wait for the next candle to show up. And if I have a nice, beautiful candle like this, completely red, nice body, then I have a hint. I can be considered it like uh, that the market, the battle fought here has been won by the bears, and that the continuation will be down. So that's a doji. Uh, now, head and shoulders. This one is very nice as well. This is a pattern. This is a, a pattern, not a single shape, but a pattern. Also very interesting. Very interesting, and it really it's really useful, very famous. So head and shoulder, what is it? Uh, it's this kind of formation. Let me show you here. Perfect. Um, this head and shoulder is a classic one. Then we have the reversal head and shoulder. Oops, sorry. If I show you, if I can draw, this is the normal, yes, this is the normal head and shoulder. Okay, we have the first shoulder there. This is the head, and this is the second shoulder. We might have a reversal head and shoulder which should be, oops, okay, let's make it, <laughs> let's make it shorter, like this, like this, and like this. So if we reach this point and we close it here, I can consider it that this trend can start, okay? That is the drawing for the reversal hand and shoulder. Now let's focus on the normal one, as in the light. Because what we have here is, uh, yes, first, first shoulder there, my head, which is above the first shoulder. The head is the higher, okay, in the, in the image always. Back 
to this support area or call, also called neckline. Again, the price testing the first shoulder area. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it doesn't have to reach the previous high. It cannot reach the head. Then, if the price is very critically reaches the neckline, it's okay. The prices can reach here. I don't know what will happen, but I'm already on alert that, uh, oops, that a potential head and shoulder can happen. The moment it closes here, I might consider the following trend. Okay, a few examples now. Um, what we can see, well, here we have a few dodges. Yeah open and closing at the same price. What I do in this case is I, I check the, the next candles. Green here, red, I don't know, okay. I wait for the next doji. Green can be, the next one is a doji, okay, I wait. Uh, green, green, red, we never go below, under the, the doji really much. And then at this point, yes, at this point I might uh, consider a buy position. If I buy here, I will have this this run to take a profit. Also here, doji, the next candle is a red one. I can think, okay, this will go down. Here as well, my next candle is red. Okay, go down. Doji here, the next candle is a green one. The next one also, uh, it's also above the doji. So I can think, okay, it's bullish. What we have else, a uh, few hammers. Okay, hammer, remember, this is the handle. This is the body of the hammer. Hammer always, they are bullish, no matter blue or red, uh, sorry, uh, red or green. Another hammer here. And see how it continues. Hammer, few hammers there. This is a reversal hammer. Reversal hammer, that it's the opposite. It uh, it addresses a downward trend. Reversal hammer. Few examples here as well. Doji, almost a doji there. Reversal and going down. Reversal going down. Shooting star because at the end of the trend, also going down. Another one beautiful here, reversal hammer, going down. Okay, many examples. Uh, head and shoulders also. I draw my neckline. Shoulder one, head, then coming back to the neckline. Bouncing again. Shoulder two. Here, I have to be careful because an activation of the head and shoulder can happen. If the price keeps going down, perfect, no problem. It will be a new high. The upward trend continues. If it reaches this level, doesn't reach the, the head price, starts to go down, I have to be on alert that a potential head and shoulder might happen. If we reach the neckline and closes below, then it's done, head and shoulder, and continuation downtrend. Normally, very important also here, uh, in case you, you place a trade following head and shoulder, your target can be the distance between the neckline and the head. This is also very important to remind. See, if I can draw it. This distance can be my take profit, which can be maybe here, no? More or less that can be... So my take profit can be there, and my stop loss can be at the head, for example, or if we reach the shoulder again, depends on me. Okay, uh, over other candlestick methods, bullish engulfing, yes, bearish engulfing. So uh, this engulfing ones, I need the candle to be, uh, to eat the previous candle, let's say this way. Why it's engulfing? Because the body, size, it's bigger from above and below um, the previous one, okay? And here the same. 
it's bearish if it's a red one compared to the green one, but it's bigger, the full body, than the other one. This can be an indication that the price can go down. Harami here as well. Here I need a gap, as you can see, because in this case, for example, price open here, closes here, but then when it opens here, there is a gap. The gaps happen in uh, stock markets, ETFs normally, not in Forex. You will not see usually um, gaps. Uh, here, very similar also, evening star. There is a gap. Let me draw it. You see, this distance, it's a gap. Why? Because normally, here the price starts here, closes here. The next candle should open here and then either go down or go down. But should open here. Why this happen in stock? Because stock market closes. So the next day can be because of pre-market that opens with a gap. So let's say this is one day, second day, third day. I have an evening starts in this case. And then a continuation down. A morning start the opposite. And hanging man, bullish amount baby. These are the... These are the... Uh, you cannot see your mouse movement. Ah, sorry. Maybe here. Yes, sorry. Uh, maybe you didn't see me drawing. I was drawing here. Yes, thank you, Jacob. I was drawing. I was meaning the, the evening star that needs uh, this gap. Sorry if you didn't see my drawing. Uh, because this candle, what represents is the opening and the closing. So the next candle should, of course, open here and then either go up or go down. But here should open. In this case, it's op it opens where? It opens here and closes here. So this happens in stock markets. Let's say this is day one, day two, day three. If this happens, then I will see for the fourth day an evening star uh, triggered. Okay, and the opposite here. What it what tells me the red candle? It tells me that it opens here, it closes here, it had this higher, it had this lower, but the opening was here and the closing was here. Then the next day, it opens here. All of this. This is a gap. Okay, these are gaps. Gaps is when the price doesn't follow the closing. Should open here. The, the next candle should open at this level and then either go down or either open in here and go up. Doesn't matter, but should open here. That's why they are connected. I will show you later on the live account how all candles are connected. When this happens in stocks, in ETFs, in oil, maybe when it closes um, on Friday and then opening on Monday, can be, but it's not that often. Uh, in cryptocurrencies, no, because it's 24 hours. But these are the gaps, okay? And this also can be used for tra uh, trading. Evening star, morning star. Okay. Uh, okay, time for live account. Let's see some examples there. Uh, okay, here, yes. Also, please let me know if you have some asset that you would like to check. Uh, more than welcome. Uh, very interesting. Let's start with gold. Let's start with gold because before starting uh, the... <laughs> you see how, guys, we are on point always. Always on time, checking the last news. Uh, this was not prepared. Uh, if, you are check if you are following gold, gold was actually here this morning. Actually, just uh, two hours ago, gold was here. See how much it went up. I'm checking one day, okay? Now I have a hammer. We agree? Now we have a hammer, and that what, it, what the hammer is telling me, potentially this can happen. Correct? If, let's say this candle closes there, fine, and the next one closes above. Then, okay, my hammer is confirmed, and from there I can trade up following this theory. What happened here? The price this morning was down. 
the price this morning was here. Let me go to five minutes and you will see what happened in gold. Boom. Now in five minutes is different. You see this morning the price was here, then it went down a bit and then suddenly super up, super up. Okay, so this can be even a hammer. I might have a hammer in one day. In one day I have a hammer, maybe in, in, in two hours already. Maybe in one hour, maybe we can see even a hammer that was formed maybe 30 minutes. What about this hammer? It worked. I think it worked. This hammer worked perfectly. This is a hammer. The next candle confirmed the hammer. It closed above the hammer. I opened my trade. Look where I am now. Great. So it depends on your candlestick period, okay? It depends on this. If you trade in one day, I wait to the end of the day. I wait for Monday. Let's say Monday closes here. This is Monday. Then for Tuesday, I can trade expecting this based on hammer uh, theory. You know, guys, that there is no uh, theory that works 100% of the times, so of course. But very nice example. I loved it. Uh, this movement happened because of the, as you can see, it's very crazy. You know, it's uh, too too much volatile. A lot of volume here. Eh? This is a thirty thirty dollars movement in gold. It doesn't happen every time, and this happened because of. Uh, I think uh, if we check the uh, no the economic calendar, you will see something very interesting here, which is the inflation. We don't have yet the number in the platform. Yes, for the core we have it. Yes, this one is the more important, no? Inflation rate month over month. Uh, previous one was 0 0.3. The forecast was 0 0.7 and look the number. Disaster, disaster. Disaster in terms of uh, inflation for, for the United States. Very bad number, uh, which is making what is making the, the Fed to potentially be even more hawkish, to increase even more the interest rates to increase the balance sheet, uh, how they reduce the pace that they reduce the, um, the government bonds and the uh, securities no? that they are holding. That's why probably the euro dollar went down. Yes. And this happened two hours ago. Okay. We are live. We do live videos. Uh, but yeah, very important. And this is what caused also the this reaction of gold. No? because of the high inflation and inflation normally gold is uh, your hedge the way you protect against deflation normally is gold so very bad number uh, sorry we have a couple of questions what time frames you like to watch uh it's nice always to start from one day at least no and to go zoom out especially to zoom out i need to go where i need to know where i come from uh, I need to know where I am. I need to know the general overview. It always helps. No, it always helps to zoom out, then come back again, come back, uh, zoom in a bit, uh, see the picture. In the last three months, right? February, March, May. Then, if you have made your analysis already in one day, you can go to four hours. You see here in four hours, I might start to see a support resistance, no? Like two channels here. Maybe I see this support, this resistance. I see that the price is moving in this area, right? Then maybe I go to one, to one hour, right? And then from an hour, then you can go into 30 minutes, no? But it's nice always to have a, a better overview. Um, 
which one would you recommend to watch? When would you enter the trade? One candle after, let's say, Doji, or and what expiry would you use? One candle after Doji can be. It depends on the candle also. Uh, maybe we have some example. Let's see uh, if we see in gold. This is almost a doji. You see this one. Let me zoom a bit more. Okay, it's not fully green, but it's almost a doji. No, look the body, how thin it is. The body is super small. The next candle, look how beautiful it is. It's a it's a beautiful green candle. It's not uh, like this candle that I'm. Mm, I don't know. If after let's say this is a doji and the next one is a beautiful green or red candle like this. I, I I can start here, no? I can start in the next candle, expecting this movement, and my stop loss I can place it in the in this low of the the lowest of the doji. Um, Kumar, I think it depends what interests you. Some don't have time and they trade short time exactly, which are riskier exactly. But if you are patient, maybe long term trades. Yes, correct. Correct. That's the thing with uh, the thing with short-term trading. You know, if I do fifteen seconds, fifteen seconds, this can change dramatically in in a moment. You know, fifteen seconds. I made. I don't know what is really happening. Look at the candle. How much is moving? You see, in fifteen seconds. Wow, uptrend. And let's buy, no? It's it's very clear. No, this is the price in 15 seconds. Perfect. So I can I can actually trade this also. I can trade it. Where is my line? This. What I'm doing? I'm matching all the lows and the highs, right? Let's make it two lines. Okay, now, my resistance, or at least the superior part of the channel. What I do now? I'm on the above part. If I am here, I would buy. Here, mm. see where we are, All right? Like if the price is correct here, then here might be an entry point, right? Here now we are in the above part in the band, superior band. So maybe to buy here can be a bit risky, but still can happen, no? We'll check this. We'll check this. Uh, it's 15 seconds, so let's check another asset and, and probably we'll see how, how it changed. Uh, in Bitcoin, uh, for example, look what we can see in Bitcoin. Uh, you see, this is a hammer, but see how this is one day, okay? All these plays. This is nothing. This is uh, a, the price is thirty two thousand and twenty nine. This is three thousand dollars. This is a very sideways movement, no? So in sideways movements, it's it's hard, no? I want to see this hammer either going down and then I have a hammer that can be a reversal. Or in an uptrend, no? In an uptrend, there might be a correction that it's a hammer. And that can be that continuation, no? But in a sideways movement, ah, you see here I have a reversal hammer, but it didn't trigger this, no? Because we entered into a sideways movement. Probably we'll see some example here. Um, yes, this can be a hammer goes up after this could sorry this could be a shooting star or reversal hammer long upper shadow you see this candle here i like it 
why I like it because we come in an uptrend. We got this hammer and the confirmation. So here could be a, a opening position with my stop loss here. Uh, nothing, this is nothing. This is nothing because it's too too small, the shadow. But this one is very interesting. This one is very interesting because the, this uptrend, and this is one day, eh? all the way up, and on the top of the trend, we have this candle, shooting star. We have a rejection. All this shadow, it's a rejection of the bullish pressure, the people buying. Uh, they were defeated, let's say, by the sellers. So the price went down, no? And then, yes, some sideways. But then the downward trend, no? When I, I would wait for this candle. This candle says nothing. This candle says nothing. But this one is very important, no? This candle is very important. And uh, that had, who had, could have been taken, no? As a downward trend. Um... On one minute, Jacob, uh, do you look price movement? If yes, can you explain what do you watch at it that gives you the insurance to go up or down? In one minute, in one day, it's the same analysis, actually. It just changes the in one month, even. Uh, you can look at the price movement, of course. Let's see, let's see gold how it's doing. Okay, it's deep. Even, it's going even, even more up even more up, you see? So this channel is not valid anymore, maybe, because it's going even up. It's the same analysis. It's the very same analysis. Even what I have, look, I have my RSI here, right? See this divergence, you see? I will draw it with a line. It's the same analysis, but I'm doing it in 15 seconds. But uh, you can do the very exact same analysis as you will do in one hour. You see? What is this is telling me? This is telling me that according to my RSI, even though the price is going up, you see this candle represents this. But this candle, which is above the previous one, the RSI is here. It's under the previous one, right? So this is a divergence. This is a divergence on the RSI. And according to RSI, it's a signal. It's a way that maybe this could happen. I have a divergence here. The divergence will be broken if we reach here, no? if we break my line. And then I can understand that the price will go up. But it's very the same analysis. What it changes is that the longer, the bigger is your candlestick period, the more information you have. Okay, so more trustful can be your analysis. But if you do 15 seconds, if your analysis can be broken in, 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 in three minutes, you will have lots of new candles. Uh, for example, here, it's a very nice example, Australian dollar, New Zealand, for long term, right? I will go now one month. See what I have in one month. This is one month, guys. I'm going to 2013. And what I find, I find a channel that is working nine years. High, 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 and high. Every time it reaches inside this band, there is a rejection. Low, 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 low. Every time it reaches the band, inferior, a rejection. Because I'm doing 30 days, because I'm doing one month, I may trust more that if the price reaches again here, may come back. And if the price reaches here, may bounce instead of in 15 seconds. This is the only thing that changes, that I have more information the bigger my candle are. But still, of course, uh, there is no guarantee, obviously. In what, then, since we are here, because we have this uptrend, let me go one one hour. I will show you something in one hour. Look, we have a, a downtrend. Let's talk now about the hammers. This is a downtrend. See how much of reversal hammers I have. One, 
I have two, I have three, almost, and almost three more here, no? But the body is too big. What I mean is normally hammers, hammers I mean, remember, no? Like this candle. Let me zoom in. This candle is a hammer. So hammer normally uptrend. When we see this shape, it's uptrend. Let's go to oil. Oil is very, it's going up, right? You will see a lot of hammers. Let's go to one day. You see? Hammer. 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 Hammers are telling me upward. Now, reversal hammers, like this, it's telling me down. When we will see the reversal hammers more? When the price goes down. when the price goes down. We don't have any clear example here of our, here, this one. No? But in this case, you see, we quickly go above the weak, so not the best example. In this case, what I would like to have, see how the next candle, this is one day, okay? The next candle really go down, but in the same day it recovers and goes up. If the next candle would have closed here, at least here, then could activate my reversal hammer. No, could I could trust more the reversal hammer, this log upper shadow. That's why it's important also to check the next candle, check the next candle to see if it confirms what you have been seeing. Okay. I agree with the divergence. It's a sign of weakness, Kumar. Let's check the gold. Let's check how we're doing in gold. <laughs> Let's check the divergence, how it's doing. Ah, nice. Nice. Very nice. Actually, did let, let's make it larger. Very nice. So good example, eh? Look, it went even to, to the red area. Very good one. So here we had a nice confirmation. Why? Because it reached the lower band of my channel. Eh? It reached here. And at the same time, I had... Eh? Look where my RSI is. Super low, no? Here. Goodbye. My stop loss will be under the channel, maybe here. And my take profit. Can be, can be here, no? Or maybe even here if I am very aggressive. Um, we can check, uh, also be careful with uh, dollar GPY, what it's been doing. We have there few hammers. I am in one day. What that means, the rejection, the sellers are trying to bring the price down, but they cannot, there is more bullish pressure, bullish pressure again. So if we really have on Monday a candle closing here, it will confirm the two consecutive hammers and then expecting this, no? And Japanese yen that has been on an incredible run because look where we were just in February at 1.15. And now we are at 134. Wow, amazing. Amazing. This is all time high. If we go to one month, we will see that we have no references at this point. We don't have resistances. <laughs> we are super high. The yen is suffering a lot. Why? Because of uh, uh, monetary policy. They, they are just uh, spending all the money. Central bank is... Uh, too much into the economy, buying the stock market, buying government bonds. It's uh, manipulating everything there, Japan. Uh, 
and this is a consequence no this is a consequence of doing that of keeping the bonds very low because if you buy a 10 year bond in japan they will give you 0.25 percent however if you buy the dollar you are getting a three percent today 10 years no they will pay you three percent interest rate to you every year so 0.25 percent versus an american bond that it's the maximum warranty to get your money it's paying you a three percent so obviously uh, this is not a surprise no uh okay we can we can leave it there if you want uh i think it was a nice webinar uh let me go green so i could say bye in a proper way well thank you very much uh, it's been a pleasure candlesticks we will be having a part two very soon in a matter of few weeks uh, i hope you you really liked it hi barbara and um and yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, see you the next time. Have a very nice weekend. And uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.